people are angry about climate change. Wake up! But to those of us, like me, with additional needs, sometimes the whole subject can seem overcomplicated. I'm here in Glasgow. There are loads of people protesting about climate change. And I want to know what they think. Why are you so angry? I think we're angry because we're just constantly being ignored and we're being lied to. We're being told things that aren't actually true. Leading this demonstration was Patience Napukulu, a young activist who had travelled all the way from Uganda. Why are you here today? All right, um, I'm engaging in this to show that the power is in the people, not in the world leaders. That it's us who are experiencing the crisis, not them. From the chants to the banners, people at the protest were highlighting the urgency of the crisis that we are facing. How can we help people like me to understand climate change? It's so complicated. It can often feel very complicated, but it's at the heart of climate change. It's quite a simple story. We're burning and creating a lot of pollution to drive our societies, and we just need to change that. Mortality rates for children with disabilities but how are people with additional needs actually affected by climate change? People with disabilities, a lot of them live in poverty. That a lot of them live in areas where impact and climate change effects are taking place. It is clearly important to include persons with disabilities because we are the one most affected. I didn't realise that climate change could be even more dangerous for people like me. But will the actions of world leaders be enough to solve the problem? I put yeah, this to the president it, of COP26, Alok is Sharma. Um, is it time for less blah 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 and more action? It is absolutely time for less blah blah blah. And you know, I've spoken to lots of young people uh, who are really quite angry that world leaders haven't done enough. And we heard the, the, the voices from the world leaders here at the start of this conference. And what I'm now trying to do is to work with their negotiators and their ministers to make sure we translate those words into commitments and action. So you're absolutely right. Keep holding us to account. Thank you. Thanks, Ruben. But when I caught up again with patience, it was clear that the answers like these are simply not believed. They should stop wasting our time. We are running out of time. Their presence and attendance at COP has to be of use to us, not to them. I want them to stop pledging. We are fed up of their pledges. They are, are, are pledging for the future. They are the solutions that they're holding for the future. What about now? We need climate action now. Yeah. Yeah. From speaking to people like patients who are already feeling the effect of climate change in their country, it was obvious to me that there is a huge gulf between what activists say must be done and what politicians are committing to. Well, COP26 has been overwhelming for me, but what have we learnt? We need less talk, more action, but time is ticking. This is Ruben Reuter reporting for Channel 4 News.